Emmanuel. My name is Juanita Maccabi. The man standing beside me is my lovely husband, Victor Maccabi. This is our son, Prince Maccabi. And the gorgeous lady at the end is a very good friend, Demi. We're coming from the USA. I am so happy to be here to give this very testimony. It all started so many years ago. I got pregnant and I carried this pregnancy for nine months. Six days to delivery. I had this cold and sensation all over me. A cold wind blew from my head, my forehead to my knee. And after that experience, I noticed my tummy became so stiff. And immediately, I noticed the baby stopped kicking in my womb. After some time, we went to the doctor and we were told the baby was dead in the womb. And miraculously, the baby came out. We stayed after two years and by the grace of God, I got pregnant again. I carried this pregnancy for nine months, five days to delivery. The same thing happened. I had this cold wind all over me, and we called the midwife immediately. We got to the hospital, and we were told the baby was dead in the womb for the second time. This baby also came out miraculously. It was after the second experience, that was where we noticed this isn't normal. So we started going to churches. My husband was living in the U.S. then, and I was in Ghana. So I attended every church in Ghana. I went through so many deliverances. I sowed a lot of seeds in the form of money. Huge sums of money were taken from me. And I was assured that everything is going to be normal. We also went to the hospital, and we were declared free to have a baby. So after three years, I got pregnant again. I carried this pregnancy for nine months, four days to delivery. I had the same experience again. I had this cold wind all over me. And after that experience, I noticed the baby died again in my womb. So this time, because of um, the deliverances I went through, I told myself I'm not going to the hospital. So I stayed for three weeks without going to the hospital. I didn't know I was doing something horrible to myself. At that moment, the baby got rotten in my womb and there was so much pain all over me. My friend here, Demi, took me to the hospital and when we got there, the doctor examined me and notice the baby was dead, rotten, and some parts of the body has disengaged into the womb. So a surgery is going to be carried out. And he told us that this is going to be a 50-50 surgery between life and death. Because um, when the baby is even taken out, some parts of the baby will be left in the womb. And it may result in... Um, taking either part of the womb out or the whole of the womb. And I became so worried because the young woman who just got married and looking for a child, and at the end, your womb will be taken out. In fact, I became so worried. So at the hospital, we didn't know what we had to do. Emmanuel. So that is when the doctor even left us because the doctor was not even ready to go through the surgery because he said anytime he is about to have a surgery and had a feeling within him, it means the person is going to die. So the doctor left us at the hospital. During this third pregnancy, two weeks to, to time, we came across Emmanuel TV and you know, I have been to so many churches for deliverances. I have taken a lot of anointing oil. I've drunk it, a bottle, half bottle, full bottle. I've taken a lot. And I have paid a whole lot of money. Sometimes they will tell me I should sow emergency seed. 
of 500 Ghana cities, 1,000 Ghana cities, 2,000 Ghana cities. And because we, we were also looking for a child, I'll call my husband, he'll send the money. And on the bed, when uh, they, they, they got me ready for the surgery, I remembered that we have a recorded prayer of Prophet C.B. Joshua on my phone. So I called my friend and she sneaked in and brought in the phone. I placed the phone over my ears, just beside the pillow, and I started listening to the prayer. And the prayer was, the man of God to say, you are released. And then I'll also say, I am released. I am released. I kept on praying. And people of God, I just saw a hand press on my tummy and the dead rotten baby just flushed out of my womb. Put your hands together for Jesus. Jesus. So when the baby came out, in fact, I was given the highest form of medication, antibiotics, and they were thinking that I was going to get reactions. The following morning, they examined me and they noticed everything was okay. I was discharged from the hospital and then I went back home. During that same moment, my husband was trying to get me to the U.S. and it was so difficult. We didn't know the problem. They just refused to just attend to us. But immediately, that baby came out through the prayer of Prophet T.B. Joshua. My visa also came. I had my permanent resident visa. I came back to give testimony. I was prayed for by the prophets. I was given a prophecy and I left to the United States in 2016. And immediately I got there by the special grace of God, I got pregnant again. I carried this pregnancy for up to 35 weeks, one week to delivery. And on the 35th week, my husband called me from work and just told me that he had a voice in his heart that he should go to the synagogue church of all nations. So he bought his tickets, called our friends in Ghana, and they joined him, and they visited the Synagogue Church of All Nations. I was left alone in the USA waiting for him to come back. So on Friday morning, he called me, and he told me that they were going to the prayer mountain. By then, I had already gotten up in my room, and immediately I came out, that cold wind met me again at the gates. And immediately, my tummy became stiff and the baby stopped kicking once again. But this time, my husband told me they are going to the prayer mountain, so I should just keep calm. That he's going there to pray for me. So I also kept calm. I was in the house praying, crying. I was telling God, what is this again? So, after six hours, I heard a voice in my heart that I should go and sleep. People of God, in that condition, no woman can fall asleep. But within 10 minutes, I fell asleep. And all I saw was a light. We had a, a Emmanuel TV in the bedroom, so I was sleeping on the bed facing the TV. I saw a light in the form of lightning went through our gates, came back to the bed with vibration, with tender, with so much noise. The bed was vibrating. I was vibrating. My tummy was vibrating in the bedroom. I shouted, Jesus, because I didn't know what was happening to me. Immediately, that experience ceased the baby started kicking again after six hours. Put your hands together for Jesus. So the following week, my husband returned to the USA and immediately I went into labor. In fact, I did not even feel the labor pain because for the first time, I had a baby kicking, a live baby, and I'm also in labor at the same time. So I did not even feel the pain. 
We prayed, and by the special grace of God, this baby prince came out successfully to the glory of God. Let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Come on, we can do better than that. Put your hand together for Jesus. So, Madam, what can you say concerning what actually took place? In fact, there is power in this house. There is power in the prayers of Prophet T.B. Joshua. When he is praying for the viewers, whether you are listening or you are watching, there is power. Let me encourage those watching me right now. You may be going through this problem or something else. Always believe that Jesus is alive. If you put your hope and trust in him, he will answer you and you will rejoice with me as I am rejoicing today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. I was told at the hospital that if I don't feel the movement of the baby for just one hour, I should call. But when I called my husband and he said, you are going to the prayer mountain, I should not call anybody. I also refused to call. But along the line, I got scared because if I don't call and something happened, they would take the baby out and arrest me and tell me that I'm the one who killed the baby intentionally. So I was scared at the same time, but was believing in the words that my husband told me that he's going to the prayer mountain and he's going to pray for me. So I shouldn't worry. I shouldn't call anybody. I should wait for him to come back from the prayer mountain. And immediately he came back from the prayer mountain. The baby started kicking again. Glory be to God. Emmanuel. My name is Victor Maccabi. The woman next to me is my wife. And this is our dear, uh, good friend of ours that helped when we needed help. You have heard it from my wife. She has said it all. But you can imagine, uh, being in marriage for 11 years without a cry of a baby in the house, what family members would say, what friends would say, please pardon me. <laughs> We can see that our gentleman is crying tears of joy. This is tears of joy after 11 years of not being have, able to have a child. Remember, they have gone through a lot as a couple. Not only once, not twice, not three times, but four times the baby died in the womb. But through the grace of Jesus Christ, through Emmanuel TV, God Almighty restored this child in her womb and he is here today to share that wonderful testimony to the glory of God. People said so many things, but I was still trusting in God. I knew that God would come true for us. Along the line, we came across Emmanuel TV. And my wife introduced me. She saw it first and she introduced me too. So when I began to watch it, I realized that something different was happening in the world. I, did, I have not seen this in anywhere, not anywhere. And I said, no, this is the place that we can, we can get deliverance. And so when she was telling me about the, the story, and all, I was in the U.S. first. Uh, all these things, I was in the U.S. She was here, and she was going through all these things. I was crying all the time because I was not here to support her. And the last one, which is this um, beautiful baby here, something told me to come here. And I knew that this is where the problem will come to an end. This is where we'll get the solution. And when she told me that the thing has happened again, she's not feeling the baby, I said, no, I cannot be in this arena of liberty for this baby to die again. It cannot happen. Hold on. Don't call the hospital. Don't tell anybody. So I told her not to call anybody, not to call the hospital, not to tell anybody anything. And she, I thank God that she listened to me because many women would have done something different because when you are in the same soup, you will know the kind of fishes that are in the soup. So she kept quiet and uh, she listened to my prayer, my, my instructions. And when I went to the prayer mountain, when man of God asked us to go to the prayer mountain, and I went, 
I had her picture when she was pregnant. I laid it on the, on the floor and I laid my hands on it and I cried to God. I told God, no, please don't let this happen again. Please don't let this happen again. Please, God, don't let this happen. This is the arena of liberty. Let me also be liberated. Please, God. So after praying and I came back, she called me and told me, the baby is kicking. I didn't know how to cry. I didn't know how to laugh. I didn't know what to do. I was so happy. And I realized that at the time the baby came, uh, uh, the baby was kicking back, was the time I was in the uh, prayer mountain. So, I, am, I will shortly say that there is power in this place. There is power in this place. Indeed, there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. And it's that power that brought about this miracle child today in Jesus' name. Because we have gone, we have gone everywhere. <laughs> There's no solution. If the solution came from here... What else? It's done. That is all. This is the land of liberty. This is the land of freedom. Emmanuel. Good morning, church. My name is Senge John Demi Nuchika. Beside me is my friend, who I call my sister now, Mrs. Juanita Maccabi, and the husband. Mr. Victor Maccabi, and I call him our little miracle, Prince Maccabi. My sister has said it all. I came into her life when she had the third pregnancy. And on the 25th of April, 2015, she went for the last antenatal. And we got the same report again. Now, she said she was tired of going to any place for any solution. So we stayed praying, hoping that things would turn around. On the 23rd of May, she went into labor and I rushed her to the hospital. When we got to the hospital, when the doctor examined her and saw the state in which she was, he instructed one of the nurses to call the police and inform them down just in case something happens to her. Then they would hold me responsible and another family friend who took us to the hospital, who accompanied us to the hospital. So they informed the police down to be waiting. Just in case something happens to her, we will be held responsible. So I was just marching in front of the labor ward, praying and crying unto God to deliver us from this problem. And then she sent one of the nurses in the delivery room with her to come for her phone. We normally record the prophet's prayer, Prophet T.B. Joshua's prayer on our phones so that when we are on our way going somewhere, we can be listening and praying along with him. So we sneaked, I sneaked the phone into her. And all I heard was one of the nurses was like, you, you are here. You are about dying. You are between life and death. And all you're thinking about is a phone. But we knew what she was going to do with the phone. So she turned on the prayer and that was the prayer of be released. So she had her ear to the phone and covered it with her head. So I was still marching in front of the door. Next thing I heard was another nurse in the room just started screaming, Hallelujah, hallelujah, the baby has come out. Now, the situation was more serious because the baby was not only dead, it was breached. It was breached. So that means that the only option was to cut her. So for a breached dead baby to come out on its own is nothing but God. It's absolutely nothing but God. So the baby came out. Within five minutes, the nurse was like, oh, the placenta and everything too has followed. So I just went limp outside and I was just thanking God. They now prescribe the highest form of medication for her because a dead rotten baby in your womb with all the infections and whatnot complications. I'm not a medical person. They gave her the highest dose. They requested from some labs, and I rushed and had the labs done. In the morning, I brought it. They now requested for the head of the gynae department of the hospital to come and examine her. So he came with his students. She became a case study for the students. So he came asking, 
if a woman is with a child and is dead, what are the complications that students were rattling all the technical terms? I was lost. So he now said, where is the labs they requested for? They brought it. He now looked at it. He was like, no. Are you sure this is her labs? And I said, yes. And it was like, based on the medications they had given to her, her labs is not supposed to be reading the kind of results that he's seeing. Everything was reading normal. There was no Let us negative. Put your hand together for Jesus. Come on, put your hand together for louder for Jesus. Everything was reading normal. And within two days, she was discharged from the hospital and we went home. And she has not had any side effect, nothing, until she went to join the husband in the US. And now we have our miracle. Glory be to God. Indeed, now we have our miracle. This is the um, record book for antenatal. In 2008, this is the recorded pregnancy. Uh, problems during pregnancy, none. It is written here. And then labor, complications, none. And then they wrote dead. It means the baby... I delivered a dead baby in 2008. And then in 2010, the same thing. Problems during pregnancy, none. And then I delivered a dead baby. In 2014, this was the scan which read, no fatal movement seen. Spalding sign. It means the baby is dead. There isn't any heartbeat. And then the parts has started disengaging in my womb. This was the picture my husband brought to the prayer mountain. This is the picture he placed on the ground and prayed on for me when I was in the U.S. And then he was here at the arena of liberty at the prayer mountain. Well, madam, we are so, we rejoice with you at what God Almighty has done in the life of you and your family. And we know that many people have also been experiencing what you went through. And we want to ask you, please, how can you advise people who are also experiencing what you went through? What words of advice can you give to them? My advice will be in two folds. The first one is those watching from all over the world. Believe in the prayers of Prophet T.B. Joshua because he prays in the name of Jesus. Have faith and trust in God. Believe that distance is not a barrier. Anywhere you are, you can be touched. And those here within the auditorium, this may be your first time or second or even tenth time. Let me encourage you this morning. Don't stop coming here. This is the arena of liberty. Glory be to God. Well, we know that God Almighty can use any medium to heal us, to deliver us, and to set us free. And we thank God that he used the wonderful medium of Emmanuel TV. That is a medium that many people have seen their deliverance, their healing, and their blessing through. And we just want to advise you that as God Almighty has done this wonderful miracle in your life, that you should stay close to him, make his word the standard for your life, and we know that the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. And can we just have a final word from you, sir? Just a final word from you. What I can say is that believe in Jesus, because without Jesus, you are nothing. I don't care what anybody says about this place. All I know is that this is the land where you can get what you want. Viewers of all over the world, you are looking at me, you are hearing me. I have told you my story. You may have the same story, probably even worse than mine. But this is where I got my freedom, my deliverance. You may say that, oh, there are other living churches. Well, Jesus is at the places where he is welcome. He is welcome here. 